Kevin. What are you looking at? I'm trying to get my bearing. You military guys will understand that. I've been getting a lot of questions here lately because of this sculpture, Roundabout. And how did I make it spin? I discovered a new type of bearing. And see, I used to use what are called flange bearings, like on this sculpture, Gyre, both at the top and the bottom. You, you can see there's two of them here on this sculpture, and it was just a process of getting the two of them lined up so they're perfectly straight and in line with one another. And that's always been my problem with flange bearings is trying to get them lined up if you're using you know, one up, you know, one above, one below, or if like on, like on Moonshine, and those bearings are actually buried down inside that pedestal. But they're about this far down inside the pedestal itself because they're so big and clunky. I couldn't get them any farther up because it got too narrow inside. And then I discovered thrust bearings. And the cool thing with a thrust bearing is it's got its own little race built into it. You know, this is the outer and this is the inner. And it traps these needle bearings inside there. So it can sit there and spin, but not on itself. What does that mean? Well, let's run back to Gyre real quick and look at those flange bearings. You see that they're bolted to the pedestal itself or the arc itself. The bearing is actually bolted down and then it's got an outer race with the ball bearings with an inner race and it sits there and twists and turns all by itself, but one half of it is held firm. Now this is a slightly different thrust bearing than the one I just showed you because it has its own races on it or, or washers if you will that have little grooves cut in them for the balls to run in. So it's almost like it's an outer race, an inner race, and then the cage that the balls are wrapped in. And what that allowed me to do was, all right, now I only need one bearing on the top of that whole pedestal for roundabout. The bearing went down over a shaft that was welded to the sculpture itself. On the bottom of the sculpture itself, I welded another big washer just something big, heavy, flat. I cut it out of a piece of plate with a hole saw that I could weld right to the bottom of my sculpture. So now my, come off of there, now my upper race has something to butt up against. And I did the same thing on the pedestal side. A nice big flat metal washer on top of a pipe that went down inside the pedestal. The pipe inside diameter, same as the shaft outside diameter, just a little bit of clearance. So the shaft is now welded to your sculpture. This is welded to the top of that pipe and the pedestal. You just put your thrust washer right on top like that with a little grease in it, and then your shaft just goes right down inside and it would meet up with the other washer from the, the sculpture itself. So now this is sandwiched in between. You've got that long shaft for stability from side to side. You've got a nice big, uh, this one's rated to I think like 3,000 pounds worth of, worth of weight on it. So nice big heavy bearing, big flat surface, all sandwiched in, gravity's pulling it down. It spun so beautiful. It was so amazing to see. And then on the bottom of the, on the, bottom of the sculpture itself, where the bearing is gonna sit on top of the pedestal on that shaft, I made that little collar just all the way around, tiny little bit of clearance above the pedestal to try to keep all the water out, keep the dirt, keep the dust out, what have you. If he ever wants to grease it, all he has to do is just pick up on the sculpture, have somebody reach in there with a, you know, a finger full of, of axle grease, and you just smoosh a little bit on the side of the bearing. You're good for another year, two at least. You know, it all depends on how fast it spins. So that gives you a little better idea on bearings. You know, something I just learned not too long ago. Don't know why, but there it is. I'm gonna really enjoy using these. Different sizes, different diameters, different thicknesses, and I think a lot of different uses. And I think I'm gonna put them to work in ways that they might not have been intended for. But speaking of working, you guys come out to the website, sign up for my newsletter, I'd appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe for the videos, and I'm gonna go back to work myself. We'll see you next time. Yeah, sometimes you're the bearing, sometimes you're the shaft. <laughs>